Now I'm recording properly. It did not say save all. Ah. And I think... Yep, yep, hold on. Let's see. Oh, that's kind of cool. So I have two. All right, so we'll get into it. Uh, I have two recordings going now, apparently. One of which is save everyone. And so it just says save there. So if I hit save now, it saves that. But then I have a second recording going below that says save all tracks. And that's how I knew it wasn't actually set properly because it didn't say, uh, what does that say? Save all tracks together. Yeah. So, yeah, that's kind of cool to know that you can do that huh i might have to play around with that because i thought you could only have one recording but it looks like you can have multiple versions of the recording that might have some greater implications in the future if i ever get off my rear end and get working (laughs) oh man what a day what a day yes yes So one thing I have been looking at recently, and I think I've kind of figured out what I would do necessarily and the kind of recommendation I would make to somebody else, but I've been looking at TripIt and looking at Flighty. Okay. And I forgot that that came through the speaker, so you heard it. (laughs) And it was just a TikTok video from Mallory. (laughs) Nothing important. And I think even with Do Not Disturb, it's still going to come through. Yeah, so I set my focus modes up. Do Not Disturb really means, like, nobody's getting in, like, unless you call. That That's the only way people can break through, and that's a small list of people that can break through that. Uh, usually what I go into is, like, a work focus or personal or something like that, which, you know, is, is a little bit more, is granular, but it's a little bit more open for people to be able to text or, or something like that because it's not necessarily I need to shut out everybody. It's just like, you know, random people, spam callers just don't need to get a hold to me or, you know, things like that. And most but, of the time, I don't have my audio going through the speaker on my computer, but now I'm seeing the negative side effect of that. So I hear a lot of noises that oh, no one typically hears. Oh, yeah, I forgot because you just reset the computer. So, you know, and you got the audio going through the Mac Mini instead yep. of headphones all the time. Can I redirect system sounds to my headphones? And would that redirect messages, do you know? Yeah, if you redirect uh, system sounds, that sends everything to wherever you point that to. Beautiful magic sound source. <laughs> Anyways, trip it or flighty. We kind of talked about flighty. Why don't you give people a real quick rundown of what these are? Because I don't know enough about trip it. I set up a trip it account. I think I hit sign in with Google, and that's the last I've done with it. So maybe I should go put some stuff in there. <laughs> and I've been waiting to talk to you about this because you, you you're like, hey, let's talk about this a couple weeks ago, and then we both forgot. So. Yeah, tell we're, me about this we're, trip. It. We're still working on that that show doc. Right? Yeah, uh, neither of us are working on that show doc. You know, I mean, nothing instructed sticks, right? We know Google Docs will work, but uh, you know, we we I really want something different. So, TripIt is a service. Think of it as an itinerary builder. It is the best way I, I can describe it. So, you can import information either, you know, manually by going in and typing in things or it has an email address you can forward things to. So, for example, uh, when I went to Talladega at the beginning of June for uh, an event where I was presenting for AT Guys, I, um, when I first booked the hotel, I just forwarded that confirmation email into TripIt. So, it had my stay dates at the hotel in TripIt. Uh, I didn't have any other transportation stuff to put there. So that's pretty much that was it, other than I forwarded an email from the uh, guy that was handling, you know, updating the vendors and stuff. Uh forwarded one of those in there, so it had the actual times that I was doing the uh, technology expo uh, from 9 to 2 uh, set up in there. And for that trip, not super useful necessarily, uh, other than if I needed to grab my reservation number for some reason to confirm with the hotel or something, I could go to TripIt and pull that up a whole lot quicker than searching for it in email. Uh, But with the Houston trip coming up for NFB, I have sent my flight information in there. That reminds me I need to reach out to JJ to get the hotel confirmation information (laughs) for that in there. Uh, But my flights are in there. 
Um, and if I were to say send an email with some um, agenda items for the convention in there, that would be added to the itinerary. So it's kind of a way to just build your itinerary. I find it useful because it's free for to to do everything that I have said up to this point is completely free and trivial. The only thing I'll get back to the pro stuff in a second, but I kind of use it just to build an itinerary. And Flighty is a flight tracking application that is all it does uh i mean it has some more features but that's basically at its core what it is you can put in a flight number uh, i think i don't know if you have to be on the page here or not to be able to forward emails into it uh, but there are different ways it can sync from calendar it can also sync from TripIt. so but it's just going to pull your flight data so my flights are currently in flighty for uh, my departure date from uh, Birmingham Airport and my return flight from Houston uh, Hobby Airport. And it gives me things like, you know, the, the flight number and it has all that information. One thing that Flighty does, and I, I, I'm i still not super clear where the demarcation line is for what's free and what's paid, uh, but I do know, you know, on a paid tier, you can get, like a crazy amount of alerts about your flight. So, you know, you can be notified when the pilot submits the uh, flight plan, for example. I mean, I don't really need that, but, you know, you can get that. Uh, if your gate changes, you can get notified, or if your flight departure time changes, or if it's delayed, or if it's canceled, you can get those notifications because they're pulling that information from the FAA. So that's cool. What I set out to figure out here, though, was – if I were going to settle on one of these apps or more to the point, if I were going to pay for one of these apps or recommend someone else pay for one of these apps as a blind traveler specifically, but just in general too, which one would I think, which one is more useful to me as a tool to use? And for me, it's come down to TripIt because of all of the other information that can be added into TripIt uh, versus just being able to track a flight. I don't see myself flying that much. And even thinking about JJ who flies quite a bit, um, I still think trip it would be a much more valuable tool because if you pay maybe a dollar more than what the annual price for flighty costs, uh, for trip it, pay a dollar more for trip it pro, you get those same gate notifications or, or flight notifications so if your flight is that you have in trip it is, is delayed is going to notify you that your flight's being delayed or your flight has been canceled or hey they changed your gate from 37a to uh 42b uh etc right so but in addition to that you also have your hotel reservation information there uh you can have an actual trip itinerary if there are events that you have to be at. Have all of that kind of built out as a thing. And it can sync with your calendar and pull things in, push things out, as well as being able to capture other types of transportation besides flying. And that's where it becomes more valuable to me. So, you know, beginning of the year after a funeral, I went to Georgia. I came back on the Greyhound uh, from Georgia. So I forwarded that old email confirmation because I bought my ticket online uh, to trip it just to see how it would handle it. It pulled it in, and now that shows as a part of my trip history is I took a Greyhound from Atlanta, Georgia, nope, Macon, Georgia, uh, to Tuscaloosa, Alabama, which is cool. You know, I, I, again, not super useful in that specific trip, uh, but can be useful to look back and see what trips I've taken uh, the ability to, say, schedule an Uber, and I have not done this yet, but you can schedule uh, pre-schedule a pickup with Uber and Lyft. Uh, so if I were to do that, say, you know, pre-schedule a Uber for a pickup from the Houston airport, I could forward that email into TripIt. And again, I have the information that's there all in one place if I need to pull up something or grab something. Uh, I don't know yet if it's going to let me pull in my, um, what are those things called? Your, uh, when you fly, you have a thing that you have your to show. Airline when you miles. Get to the, the, oh, your no. boarding passes. Yeah, there you go. Thank you. Boarding <laughs> passes is the thing I was trying to say. Yeah, but those will be an Apple Wallet. Ah, well, cool. So, uh, but just you know, and TripIt Pro, I think is forty nine dollars a year. Yep. Uh, and uh, Flighty is like forty eight dollars a year. So there's really a dollar difference. But for me, as a traveler, it, and, and again, I'm not going to pay for either one of these uh, necessarily. I did end up paying for trip it accidentally <laughs> i mean uh flighty accidentally 
<laughs> I was going to say, really? You're not going to pay for one of these, huh? It, it, in, in a normal year or moving forward, I'm not going to pay for one yet because I don't travel enough to, to need that level of flight alerts about, you know, departures and all of that stuff. Now, J.J., you might want to consider paying for one of these because, I mean, that dude flew back to Michigan and then back to Nebraska in a week. So, you know, <laughs> and then he's flying to Houston. So, J.J. flies a lot is what I'm trying to say. Yes, yes. Uh, I- I want to fly more, but I got to get someone else to pay me to, or to pay for my flights because I don't want to pay to fly more. If that makes sense, right? Like, I mean, uh, I'll fly. I have no problem flying. Yeah. It's just there has to be some money involved for me to fly and not coming out of my pocket, but yes. going back into my pocket. Right? Yes. If I'm paid to be somewhere, I will be there. Uh, if I'm reimbursed after paying to be somewhere, I will do that. But just flying, just to be flying, I mean, you know, it's not if, that great. If we can trust you to reimburse us. Now I'm kind of glad I didn't take that one gig that would have almost made you fly across oh, country. Oh, man. Dude. <laughs> I did not think about that because that was... Oh, man. Yeah, I would have yeah. been one upset man, individual oh, if yes. I would have yes, laid yes, out the yes. cash to fly out there for that thing, <laughs> got back, and I did not get my money. Or oh. they tried to... Even if they would have tried to send me an Amazon gift yeah. card as a reimbursement. Yeah, because we know that's probably what you would have tried. <laughs> about that good thing we didn't jump on that one yeah yeah in retrospect sometimes it, it's a good thing to procrastinate uh or so if you know which is what we <laughs> yeah, said that in that too. case just no uh, i think we both said no on that one uh did you download the trip app because that was my concern is is it just a web wrapper is it actually fairly usable oh like, no it's actually an app app uh, okay it's, it's not like a okay. web wrapper yeah it's, it's pretty decent uh it's how i normally look at stuff like check it out uh anyway it's from the trip it out they do have a website and you can do that the other thing about trip it too that's interesting to me or at least makes it more likely that i would want to use it is they do have a website which i have not been to really uh, but it's cross-platform, so it's also on Android. I don't know how well the Android app works. I'm going to take a look at it uh, sometime this week because I'm, I'm setting up a new Pixel. Well, I'm setting up a Pixel like it's new. And um, so I'm going to take a look at some of these apps too. And that's another thing that I'm looking for is back to something I wrote in notes a long time ago, and I think we did talk about it on the show, looking for things as I add new tools or, or, or look at changing a tool because something isn't actually giving me everything I need trying to find something that is going to be cross-platform because I am moving between OSs. I'm firmly in Apple <laughs> software land for the most part. You know, I'm going to be on the Mac. I'm going to be on the iPhone for the most part. Uh, and at this point, you know, if I had to change any device in my system to a different operating system, I would probably go Android from iOS before I would go Windows from Mac OS. Mm. Partially because I can cheat. You know, really? Nobody, that I surprises mean, me, actually. Really? Yeah, because you're in Windows every day versus you using Android. So I figured you'd be more comfortable with switching from Mac OS over to Windows if you had to. I mean, I didn't iOS say going Android. from iOS to Android would be easier. But if I had right. to make that choice, I would go. And the reason is because the things that I have to be that have to be done mm. on my phone, not that I would like to do or that are nice that I can do these things on my phone, but the things I need to do, they're, they're simple enough to do on Android. You know, there, there's not going to be anything getting in my way of basically texting people and dealing with phone calls and maybe checking email and some occasional browsing. And for me, you know, maybe not being able to browse the web so well uh, is a good thing because I still haven't put Amazon on my phone. <laughs> I have only bought stuff this month that I actually was buying because I need to take this stuff to Houston or we needed this thing in the house. Not randomly, oh, I'm just in Amazon because I don't have anything to do. Let's open up the Amazon app and poke around. Oh, look, this thing that I've been eyeballing is on sale. Yeah, let's go ahead and buy that. No, nope, none of that has happened this month. That, that's awesome. So the uh, TripIt application you can download and do pretty much everything for free. It looks like, uh, in, I'm pretty sure you went over this, in order to get alerts and more detailed information, that's what you pay the 50, $49 a year for, right? Yeah, yeah. Gotcha. So everything I've outlined that I use it for right now is completely free. So even forwarding you know, confirmations into TripIt uh, is, is a part of the free deal. Uh, I'm pretty sure they're they're advertising. I mean, there are ads in it somewhere, so I'm pretty sure they're advertising against you or something like that. But I don't think they're selling my data out the back door necessarily. And frankly, I can't do anything about the airports doing <laughs> any of that or the hotel. So if I'm traveling and people want to know if I'm traveling, they could probably find out. <laughs> so yeah, 
So, before you started traveling, you sent me a package that I reused, and I'm sending this box off to someone else. Funny how, when you actually pay attention, you can reuse these boxes a lot. But, I discovered today something, and I said, when we record, I have to ask him. I, I had to resist the urge of pulling out my phone to call you. So... Uh, we both use Pirate Ship now. I love Pirate Ship. Thank you, Doug. Appreciate you sharing that. And thank you to the supporter of the show that I almost forgot to say thank you to. So, yeah, don't want to yeah. just throw that in there. But thank you. Can't just thank Doug and not the person who supports the show. Now, Doug, if you support the show, we'll make sure to support or thank you every show. Um, yeah, Doug's like, I'm not giving you any money because you I guys know. are going to thank me for stuff that I tell you about anyway. I like know. Pirate Ship. Yes, yes. Pirate Ship is amazing. If you're, I think it only works in the U.S. and or the U.S. and Canada. I'm not actually 100% sure. So it might be worth looking at PirateShip.com. See if it's available in your region because I know we have international listeners. Um, so I was taping the label that I printed on my printer on the box. And I said, what's this sticking right here? And then I noticed that your label was a sticker. So how did you make that happen? Or is that a sticker from something else? And I just let into that from nothing. Ah, so <laughs> I have not bought ink yet because I'm still waiting for Prime oh, to possibly replace okay. my printer. So what I do, and this is a tip for people, if you you know have the ability to travel, uh, or, or somebody else is going by one of these places that will let you print stuff, still buy your label in Pirate Ship and then just take it to the place and have them print it out. So they actually printed it out on a label, and I just stuck it to the box. That's oh. why you have a sticky label. Okay. Otherwise, it would have looked like your label printed out on paper and then taped over so the, the, the label itself doesn't get damaged. Yep. Yep. I tape over uh, all four sides of the label with this one I did. So that way I'm sure it's stuck there and the label's not going to just flap around in the wind. But when I saw that, I knew you had the same printer I had and I got super excited. I'm like, you know, he's got to tell me about this. Now I'm, I'm slightly less excited, but I'm glad to know that we can let <laughs> listeners know that if you need to make your label on pirate ship, I, and when you're using pirate ship, what pirate ship is going to do. So first of all, what you do with pirate ship is it's a free service that you go and you can copy and paste the address of the person who you're sending the package to, and then add a, additional information such as the weight or the dimension of the package. And it will let you pick your return address. And then you're able to uh, add the person's email address as well. And it'll send them their tracking number. I have mine set to send an hour after I create the label. And that's pretty handy because if you have the person's name on one line and their email address on another and the rest of their address, you just copy and paste. Works out pretty well. With Pirate Ship, though, they're always going to give you the lowest rate. And most of the time, this is great. But I will say, if you decide to use Pirate Ship, take a look at that USPS. If UPS comes out to be a little bit cheaper, in the instance of the package I'm sending today, it came out to be one penny cheaper, uh, and UPS said will arrive Monday, so it'd take it seven days to get there. I looked at USPS, and it says will arrive Thursday, so it'll get there in three days. So. Sometimes the cheapest isn't always the best because for, for a better customer experience for the person who purchased the items, like I'll pay a penny to get it to you four days sooner. Yeah, and that is one one thing to be cautious of with or be aware of rather with pirate ship is yeah, they're always gonna show you the absolute cheapest rate, but sometimes the absolute cheapest cheapest rate literally is a penny difference. Like it will say, you know, pay an extra penny to use USPS. And it's like, okay. Another thing to factor in with that and that I've been thinking about too is if you're only sending one package, <laughs> Michael's laughing at a, a, a TikTok. I'm laughing at a message because Mallory just texted me a label printer that's compatible with iPhone, Mac, and Android. Is she listening? Wait, we're not even live streaming. How is she listening to Because she's show? hearing my side of the conversation. Ah, okay. It's like, wait a minute. We're not streaming this anywhere. How is she getting this? Uh, oh. So on a side, on another note, I do believe the printer that we have, the same, the Epson Workforce 3820, mm -hmm. I think is what it is, uh, does have the ability for you to do label printing. I think it does. Go configure it and adjust it and put the right paper in. So that that is a possibility as well. Uh, I love I think this is actually. I think Tia is actually printing some labels out on this printer uh, for stuff that she was doing. But another thing to be aware of with Pirate Ship is 
think about how you're going to get the package, you know, picked up or, mm. or dropped off or whatever, right? UPS charges four bucks for pickup. If you're only sending one package and the shipping costs you five dollars or something, <laughs> seven bucks, like it may not be worth paying. It may be worth paying a dollar more to be able to freely hand it to a postal worker or have them come pick it up than to pay the four bucks for UPS to pick it up. And you can also schedule pickups with both of the UPS and USPS. And they from don't, within pirate ship. Yes, from within pirate ship. And they don't charge you for USPS. But as Demasi said, UPS does charge you. Sometimes, though, UPS is going to be more reliable, I guess. I don't. And, and cheaper. In some instances, I've some, seen UPS be a couple dollars cheaper. Oh, I'm like, yeah. You know, I yeah. Mean, I've seen instances. Like when I sent your package, for example, I think it would have costed me not twice as much as. as for USPS, but I think it probably would have been like maybe five to seven bucks more for USPS than it was uh. for UPS. So I just went with UPS. Now, because I had to get the label printed out uh, elsewhere, I just sent the box along and had them stick the label on it and ship it from there. Uh, but the mailbox place I use for my business here uh, is, is good for that because they handle all of the shipping services. Mm -hmm. So... I can go up there, have them print a label out for me, stick it on my box, and, you know, just leave it. And if I already have a label, I can go drop stuff off if I'm already going there anyway. So that, yeah. that's been super useful. And the few times I've had to ship something FedEx, I will go there as opposed to going to the <laughs> Kinko's. FedEx will pick up for you, but I don't know if they charge. I, I suspect it being FedEx, they probably charge to pick up for you. I mean, it depends on how, I mean, FedEx charges a lot more to ship, so yeah. I, I don't know. I, I, the thing is, like, nothing integrates, or at least I have not seen a service like Pirate Ship or Orange Miller, which we previously used, uh, that uh, deals with FedEx, though. Hey, FedEx, start getting some deals or something. Right. And tell Mallory what she really should send you a link to is a nice laser printer that'll be on sale on Prime Day. And then you can buy a laser color printer and print labels and all the other stuff. I just told her. And save yourself some money because you won't have to buy ink and you won't have to refill it nearly as much. And uh, that's the reason I'm waiting to buy a laser printer. Like, for what it's going to cost me to get ink, that's the thing that's aggravating me. What is going to cost me to get ink? Um... I could, I mean, right now I could buy a new printer. It's just not, not the one I want. I want yeah. a color laser. Yeah. Uh, but I could buy a new printer. And it's not to say that the toner for the laser printer is going to be terribly less, you know, expensive. But I have a lot more time to use that. I know one of my ink cartridges is not empty, but it probably just dried up. And mm -hmm. So yep. there's nothing I can do about it. Yep. And, and that's right there, 80 bucks that you're going to have to go spend. I think that's what we spent. Maybe it was 60 on the ink. I don't remember. Somewhere around there. It was more than I wanted to spend on ink. So the color. So I think the last time I bought ink, uh, I spent over 100 bucks, but I had to refill because it was after getting the, the printer. And we did, you know, we tested the printer out a little thoroughly. Mm -hmm. I, I originally bought this, this inkjet with the idea that, oh, we're going to get some photo paper to start printing, <laughs> you know, some of the photos the kids take and all of that stuff. Well, nobody went and bought it. I refused to buy it. I was like, somebody else has to go buy the photo paper, and nobody ever bought it. So, <laughs> therefore, we never got it. You bought the printer. They can buy the I the bought paper. the printer. I bought the paper. I bought the ink. I bought the refills for the ink. I was like, all you got to do is go buy the printer paper. And you can, you know, buy the photo paper and you can print out photos. It printed really nice photos, like much better than I think anybody expected photos on regular printer paper. Uh, but so I was like, go get the photo paper and you have some nice glossy photos <laughs> you can print. Nobody bought the paper. So, you know, here we are. Um, but that was one of the reasons I went ahead and bought the inkjet. I also think you already had this printer and told me it was pretty decent. Like, it, you know, it, yep. it was okay as, as a printer. And it is okay. It's not a terrible printer. It's not an HP first and foremost. So that's that's bonus points right there, just not being an HP printer. I need a sound pad so I can go. Pew, 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 pew. You say that every show. I know. But I hadn't downloaded Farago. That's one I don't own. Um, I, uh, yeah, yeah. I should play with it, though, because I've never actually downloaded it to even play And I'm also it. not actually running clean feed at the moment, so I wouldn't want to pipe the, the sound effects through onto my actual track because, you know, that, that could that could lead to some unintended consequences is, is what I'm saying. It should be on its own separate track in case you decide, hey, that's kind of stupid. And if I was talking when I did the pew, 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 
you want to be able to take that out if you're like, no, you know what? I don't really want to use that. <laughs> I love those emails. Stripe, your payout is on the way. Which means it's probably in your account now. Unless uh, you just initiated it. No, I did not initiate it. Uh, it will yeah. probably be in your account within 30 minutes, I'm betting. That's that's interesting. Uh, which means Tomasi's going to get some money probably. <laughs> they're, on U- they're on UTC or sometime. So uh, send you email. it's already tomorrow okay. on their clock. Uh, yeah, no, it is. I get those. Yeah, yeah. So you know, you'll, mm. you'll probably see your money here in the next few minutes. Yeah, if it's going into Mercury, you'll get a notification from Mercury that says, "Hey, no, you have money." No, I won't. Oh. Because I'm not signed into Mercury on my phone. I don't even have Capital One set up on my phone. I've been I've been downgrading OSs and switching phones in preparation for a convention. Because I went somewhere. I forget where I went. Oh, I went to this event um, earlier this week. Uh, a couple hours away and my phone died after we were there i'm like oh i'll just plug it in and then i remembered why andrew didn't like that phone because it had problems with the uh, charging port so i sold it and then doug sent me thank you again doug uh remember sticky tack see see this is why doug's never gonna pay man i know just saying i know uh sticky tack sounds like something i've probably heard of it's like this sounds like something doug would send you (laughs) yeah It's uh, used to like stick paper to walls and stuff like that, so you don't have to use tape, and it's kind of sticky, but you can mold it and, and roll it around. And someone showed him on a YouTube video that you kind of like roll it into like a, a tiny little lightning-shaped tube and then push it into your lightning port, and then it'll stick to any uh, lint or anything that could be stuck oh, in there. And then you pull smart. it out, and then it'll pull all that stuff out. So you don't have to worry about getting a Q-tip or cleaning it out or anything. like. I'm like, that is ingenious. Uh, Should have sent well, me this before I listed this. <laughs> no, okay, could I, could I get some of that? I mean, He's I got small kids who probably I have an has- Amazon link if you want it. Oh, he sent sure. me an Amazon link. That's the thing about Doug is he'll tell you about something, then he'll send you a link, and then you're like, "I got, I think I gotta go buy this now." Yeah, send, send me an Amazon link, man. I will go, I will go buy this. Speaking yeah. of Amazon, I don't. <clears throat> you and I don't talk much about medical and stuff like that, but we've talked about getting up and getting out and doing some competitions. Which, by the way, Demasi lost the competition horribly. Uh, oh yeah, following up on that, yeah, um, I, I was. Um, I, I was uh, I was thrashed <laughs> is the way I would put that. Uh, now to well, be fair, I did not one single workout that entire week. Uh-huh. Uh, so all yeah. of the points I accumulated was just normal movement, me walking around, me walking, you know, down the street and coming back, you know, things like that. Never initiate because you know that is kind of the problem for me with the whole health thing is not doing things to be healthy or trying to exercise at all. It's remembering to start a freaking workout. Mm. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, if you don't, if you don't start the workout, I thought Apple was supposed to make it. So if it realized, Hey, you've walked down the block now, would you like to uh, start a, a outdoor walk workout? That's worked for me twice. I think. Yeah. So the only time I've ever had that happen is, uh, on the two occasions that I left the house to walk around to the school to get one of the kids. And like, I was walking hella fast. Yeah. Just, and that's the just only reason walking. I think it picked up. Yeah, just like, I mean, not steady walking and walking extremely fast, like ah. as fast as I could possibly go uh, because I had to go get my kid. And mm-hmm. the only way for me to get to them was to walk to the school, which is, you know, it's not that far away, yeah. you know, generally speaking. But, you know, it, there was not going to be a ride here in time enough for me to go get them. So I just walked around there and I was walking fast. So, uh, so then it picked it up. So then it picked it up, but just a normal leisurely, like I'm out for it, just a stroll, like yep. it never triggered for me. And and me and Tia have done this a few times. I mean, several times we will go walk around, you know, the, the neighborhood just to get some exercise. And, you know, we'll be halfway through it. And I'll be like, oh, man, I didn't start a workout. Mm, mm. Yeah, at that point, I'm like, well, forget it. It's not I'm worth it that. now because I'm only going to get half the workout points yeah, from what I actually yeah. did. I, so. I got the exercise. I just didn't get the points. So, yeah, you know. yeah. My Apple Watch is kind of broken. I am not sure what I'm going to do. And I don't think Mallory hacked it to convince me to buy an Ultra. Although she did say, I'm surprised with how low the AT&T bill is this month. Which is kind of scary, scary words. (laughs) (laughs) Anyways, what I was talking about is uh, I went to the doctor last week and... 
among a couple of other things that I'll talk about later, I discovered, and I knew that it was getting up there, but I, I have a blood pressure problem, and, and my blood pressure is a little high. So, of course, Mallory went to her best friend Amazon, not me, to buy a accessible blood pressure monitor. And uh, I never did any research on this, and I'll put a link in the show notes for this. Uh, but she found one that was like $44, and then it had like a 15% off coupon, and another coupon. So I think she got it for like $32 or $30. But it will, uh, it has very tactile buttons that you just push. And then it tells you when it's doing the blood pressure reading. It tells you, you know, to sit still and not move your arm. And then after that, it will read out the uh, blood pressure level and it will also read out the pulse. It has an application that I have not downloaded yet because it just talks to me. So I don't really need the app, but I will download it as a QR code. So I'm, I'm going to scan that code to be able to go download the right app. Because if you search for it, the name of the brand, it comes up with like five or six different apps. So I'm going to use that QR code, scan that, and then uh, go download that app. Because what it will do is it'll take my blood pressure information and bring that into health so I have that hold on <laughs> so I have that information I think that's the same car that went by last time we were recording it sounds very familiar oh man I almost wish you could just isolate that that one sound and pull that out man that would be crazy <laughs> But it'll drop it into Google Health or Apple Health and uh, let you keep track of that data and then watch the trend of how the blood pressure is going and and does getting out and walking. Because I will admit, I do a lot more sitting than I definitely want to do, for sure. I don't, I don't really walk anywhere and I need to change that. So, uh, yeah, that's my tech find, I guess, of the week from Mallory. It's a affordable, accessible blood pressure monitor that will talk to you in English. I don't know about any other languages. So I'm going to throw out right now, I'm, I'm, I'm taking an over under, how long before Mallory buys him a treadmill to go under his standing desk? Um, I don't got the money for that right now, Demasi. <laughs> That's why I'm taking an over under. I'm putting it at... What are we, June? I'm going to say October. Yeah, yeah. Maybe Christmas. October. Maybe maybe October, but give it in Christmas, possibly. So I would say in that season, maybe. Uh, but I'm, I'm, I'm interested. Reach out to us on Mastodon if you have an over-under over guess of is it going to be before October or after October, and, and you know, be as precise <laughs> as you want to be when she's going to buy. I honestly think if, if – if, if other things had not occurred recently uh, for you, it probably would have got bought on Prime Day. I'm uh -huh. being honest. Yep. 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 But there will be another – oh, Black Friday. No, I am changing my over-under. I say the uh, Black Friday week. Whenever ah, that okay. starts. Whenever that starts, I, I feel like that's when it's going to get purchased. Now, whether Michael knows about it at that time is an entirely different conversation to have. But I think that's when she gets it. So, yeah, reach out on Mastodon with an over-under. What, what do you think? I, I think it's going to happen before the year is over for sure, though. The car's back. Do you hear it? Oh, now I hear it. Someone's just having fun. <laughs> <laughs> I do sounds... not disagree with that. I think you're right. It's going to be around that time, and... Hold on. I think you're right. It's going to be around that time. And uh, yeah, I, it's all for the because she wants to keep me around so she can keep buying stuff and listening to me. Too bad. Uh, now I'm going to have to go edit that. <laughs> yep. <sighs> so what else yeah. you want to talk about? So uh, there was something. Oh, you said you wanted you asked me about pirate ship. I was wondering what you had about pirate ship. I was like, what? I don't know anything about pirate ship. You don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I seriously thought you had a label there and you had a label printer. I'm like, huh. I forgot that you ran out of ink. So on the health tip, so we're going to do another challenge. We'll do it this week and we'll do it the week of convention because I'm curious I'm, I'm curious how much is, is going to happen during convention because yeah. it's going to be different. A lot of walking around. Um, just a quick note because this will be the last episode that publishes before 
convention is actually starting. So when you hear the episode on Monday the 26th, that is the uh, this is this episode. Uh, but when you hear the episode on July 3rd, that will have been pre-recorded. Last uh, week. <laughs> Man, what does time mean anymore? <laughs> exactly. So when that episode publishes, we will already be in the midst of convention uh, doing what we're doing. So if you're going to Houston... Uh, to the NFB National Convention, come by booth A11 uh, and say hi. Let me know you listen to the show. That's where the AT guys booth is going to be. Or if there's some fun going on, you think I should, you know, check out. You know, feel free to ping me on uh, Mastodon. Mastodon. Does Mastodon has the concept have the concept of DMs? I, yes. I don't even, oh, okay. I, they I do. Something about server admins can see those messages or something. So if yeah, you're concerned about can it, most certainly see all messages that yeah. get sent. That much I do know. So, but yes, yeah. you can send a message directly to someone uh, on on Twitter or Mastodon. No, oh, that tells you how much I've been really using it. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, if there's something going on, mention me. I I will get the mention notifications because Mona is set up on the phone. I've actually made the complete switch over to Mona. Uh, and I haven't deleted Ivory just because there are a couple of people around that are going to be using it. And I was like, well, since I paid for it, I can keep it on the phone and maybe help troubleshoot or verify that, yes, this thing does the way behave the way that you are saying it behaves. It's not just you. Uh, but never, I don't have it on the Mac. I'm not going to pay for it for the Mac. That's an additional cost, which I didn't realize nah. either. So I'm not doing that. I got Mona set up all the way now. Uh, are so you? Do you have Mona that. on the Mac? I do have Mona on the Mac. Um, that right now I, is my preferred way to use it, surprisingly. I, I need to actually go in and do a little bit more configuration with it to kind of get it get it set up. But the things you have told me about how you have set yours up uh, definitely probably is going to be my way of interacting for sure because it's quicker to type on a keyboard, on a real keyboard, than a you know on-screen keyboard. And more reliable. <laughs> more reliable. So, Mike, tell people why you uh, why you reset your computer. Oh, why did I reset my computer? Honestly, I think the biggest reason I reset it was because I was having some, sometimes voiceover and Mac OS, you get these weird things that happen and they're, they're hard to explain. Um, for me, things were just getting very sluggish. I would open a Reaper project and I'd start editing content and all of a sudden like I would get the Reaper not responding message. I'm like, this is not good. Like, I don't, I don't, I don't like this. And I'm not even sure why I was getting that. I am being more conscious of what I'm installing. I had a lot of menu bar apps. I think that's what they're called where you have those extra menus in the extra menu, man, that was very overwhelming. So if you have found a way to reliably manage your menu bar, that, that will impact voiceover users because there's ways to accessibly manage your, your menu bar, but they don't necessarily make changes for voiceover users. Please reach out to us as well because I'd love to hear about those. But for me, it really came down to I want a fresh start. And Demasi sent me these hard drives we talked about last week. And so I just decided to move everything over to the hard drives and then reset my Mac and Almost everything's back up and running. I love Maestro because I'm using that, and all I had to do was point it at the actual directory on my hard drive. It said, would you like to merge these with your Dropbox? I said, yes, I would. And then it said, these are already merged, so we don't have to do anything. That's not actually the words it said, but I was up and running with Maestro like really quick because everything was already right there on the external drive. Um, and then with Homebrew, that helped me get a lot of other things in. But ultimately, why I wanted it was when I go to convention, I'm taking this Mac mini, I'm taking a portable battery and I want everything to be as smooth as possible in retrospect. Should I have waited until after convention to reset the computer? Possibly, but I have this week before convention to make sure that I can get into everything and can access everything before I actually am there in person and swiping people's credit cards and processing orders. No, makes sense. And you do have a week. And, you know, on his, on a base level, like the only thing you really have to have up and running, I think, is uh, Shopping parallels. Uh, I don't even need parallels. Oh, yeah, because you don't need parallels. Nope, because I, I, I still – yeah, yeah I, Zen, I, yeah, I still do ZenCard on the Mac too. I, I, I was, I was thinking just AT guys in general, Windows, right? Uh, but no, you're right. I'm, I'm not going to even be in Parallels either to do uh, checkout stuff because the cart works fine, works amazingly on the Mac. Well, 
I mean. <laughs> <laughs> well, I would say this. There are some things that are more efficient on the yes. Mac with uh, with Zen Card for us than it is on Windows. But there are some things on Windows that are <laughs> just infinitely, you know, better to navigate. But that goes back to why I said I would switch to Android first before I would switch to Windows full time because – I feel like, unless this was a very, I mean, it would be a weird universe in the first place. Somebody like, you have to give up an Apple device. Choose one. Uh, but if that happened, I'd give up the iPhone and pick up a Pixel or something. Or a Smart Vision 3, maybe. I was uh, playing with that today. Because um, on the Mac, first of all, I can't lose things like Loopback and Sound Source oh. and so on and so forth. Like that, that would be terribly sad. And you know nobody said I can't run Windows inside of the Mac. So look, I still ah, it. ah, you get the best of both worlds. I I do see that. That makes sense. You still that has been the argument for the Mac forever is you get the best of both worlds, and you you still do uh, with Parallel. I I really like Parallels. That's just done so nicely. It it it, it is done very well. Uh, maybe eat my words, which is. <laughs> no look. I wish they were going to be at convention this year. I would just walk over like, yep, you guys made me eat my hat. Yeah. Um, yeah man but yeah it is nice i haven't even really looked at vmware at all uh one because when i got into it i didn't uh, got into parallels and actually went and downloaded the trial and set it up I was like, oh well you know once you get past these setup screens everything is gravy uh why would i you know what never mind and this is cheaper you know cost me less money to get parallels uh set up i mean pay for parallels and it would have cost me to get vmware so I've never even looked at it. I, I still kind of want to see how it behaves to see if there's anything different or anything they're doing now that makes it more useful. But the stories I hear from most people is like, you can set it up, but it's a lot more of a pain in the butt to set up VMware right now on the Mac with Windows than it is Parallels. Something we haven't talked about in a little while is what are some apps that you're using on a regular basis now? One of which I can talk about, but I can't give any more details. And for me, that's Be My Eyes. I'm using that every day now, surprisingly. Um, and another app that I find myself poking at more but not using is Shortcuts. And I have a love-hate relationship with that. Darcy actually explained shortcuts um and in my relationship to shortcuts uh in a very succinct way and that was some things are better on the mac some things are better to do on the iphone and sometimes you need an ipad to complete it too <laughs> and that's just how it is with shortcuts is some things are doable on any of those platforms but yeah that's i've been playing with that a little bit that is an interesting thought but you know i've heard a sighted person say similar like you know these shortcuts i'll go to the mac to edit and sometimes i'll pull out my ipad because it's easier to do the ipad side by side thing and mm -hmm. you know so it's interesting that that is the case i have um i'm gonna have to start poking more shortcuts because i have not been doing as much with it as i really want to be uh, so i need to start working more on that so things I've been working with, I've honestly been more in the operating system more recently. So trying to tweak focus modes, really trying to figure out how do I have a focus mode show me a specific home screen. I thought I had this set up right, but it still shows my main home screen also, which should be hidden. And I cannot figure out how to make that go away. Because mm. I wanted a travel um, focus mode. Which would, you know, have like the TripIt app and Uber and Lyft and, you know, stuff like that up on the screen and the wallet app in case I needed to pull that up. And I don't know what else I wanted there. I was just like, well, let me make a travel focus. Um, and let me finish making this AT Guys focus, which will have the Gmail app on the screen. And, you know, show a Fantastical widget that shows the AT Guys um, calendar set. Uh, things uh. like that. So I've been playing a lot with that. Uh, apps that I have been just, you know, using just in general more and more, though, or consistent. I mean, still using Draft for a lot of stuff. Uh, that that is that that is my catch-all escape hatch, break glass in case of emergency tool because it's everywhere. Works on the Mac, works on the phone, works on the watch. Um. What else have I been playing around with? I have been using Be My Eyes a lot more. I'm not not to the point where I'm using it every day, but uh, I would say I, I, I mean, one is even on my phone just just to start that car because man, I can't tell you before 
Before a few weeks ago, I had not had Be My Eyes installed at all, uh, except on a blind tail, and that was just for, you know, customer service purposes. So using Be My Eyes more. Um, okay. I've not actually been using Ira as much. All right. Me neither. I will this week, though. I guarantee it, because I know it'll work. I need to install it and set it up on this phone. Uh, and, and I know they'll have the information I need. And honestly, I think O'Hare is a access point, too. Uh, so that'll be helpful. That's where I will need it the most. I mean, you guys had an interesting discussion yesterday when you recorded on IACast. And I don't think I heard you mention much. So I'm going to ask you, do you use Meet and Assist? And how do you get through airports? Uh, do I use what? Meet and assist, where they have someone meet you and assist you through security and then to your gate and then drop you off and then uh, you get on your plane and then you have someone meet you when you get off. So I have used that when traveling. Um, I use I it. Probably, I will probably make use of that when I travel this time, too. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think Tia's going out to security with me this time, but when I get off in Houston, for sure, I'm going to use that. Uh, just because I, I don't I don't, I don't, don't fly through Houston's airport enough. This would be my... First time in the Houston Hobby Airport since 2011. Uh, it's been a while then, 12, so 13 years, 12 years. Been, been wow. a while, been a while. Yeah. Uh, if I were, it, it's one of those situations where that that's that's where I don't have to try to be, and I'm not going to even attempt to be a, a super blind person. Like I'm going to ask for help because it's quicker, it's more efficient, and I'm all about efficiency over anything else. Yeah. Um, and plus I need to make sure I make my flight or get out of here before, you know, things happen. <laughs> so I will absolutely use it. Now, there are times where there's absolutely situations where if I were flying a lot, let's say out, out of Birmingham going to different places, but I was flying a lot, there's probably a point that I would get to where I may not need as much assistance inside that airport. I don't mm-hmm. know because I haven't been in that airport in about 12 years. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I. I think tools like Ira, though, for me, so a lot of times when I use that service, because I, I, I do use it myself quite regularly, um, I get taken to a place and, you know, I, I do what I need to on the way over there. And then uh, I go to the gate and they leave me there, it, which is fine. I, I think that's perfectly fine. But now we have tools like Be My Eyes or Ira that we can open up and say, hey, what's around me? Uh, the other when last year when I flew through Vegas, I smelt food and uh, I had three hours till my next flight. I'm like, I really want to go get some food. So I just opened Ira, had him take a look and say, hey, yep, you're at here's where the gate is and they're able to see where we were so i made sure that they were aware of that and then we went found some food i ate and then i called ira back i said hey the agent told me that i was at this gate here's where i need to go can you give me some assistance with that and that was kind of awesome because it allowed me the ability to go do it on my own whereas in the past i probably would not have had the courage or the the desire to go put myself out there just to try to find something i would just you know pack some snacks and then uh hung out in my chair for three hours like a good little boy and then got on my plane so uh definitely feel and uh, it's encouraging to have those tools in our tool kit yeah and that's more than a little awesome that that is absolutely awesome because there are times where like you you don't want to impede on the staff that's there if you could find somebody that was there that works for the <laughs> airport anyway to help you with something like that. But at the same time, like, I don't want to eat these chips either, like, because whatever they're cooking over there is smelling delicious. And mm-hmm. I need to go find it. Uh, and having Ira, and for me, it's kind of a mixed bag. And I, I say that in the sense of, like, there are times where I have been in that type of situation before Ira existed. I haven't had a chance to do that. So, you know, I may get a chance to do that while I'm sitting in the Birmingham airport because I'll be there for a while. Do you have a layover, or are you direct? Nope, I'm direct from Ugh. here to Houston, and then when I come back, uh, it's a direct flight. But I will be at both airports for an extended period of time. Uh, yeah. Because I'm getting dropped off early here, so I'll be at the airport here about 5, and then coming back, my flight leaves out in the afternoon, so I'll have to leave the hotel a couple of hours before my flight mm-hmm. just because of checkout time. Uh, but there are times I've been in situations like that on, on, you know, bus stations, you know, in the days of the Greyhound when that was a, a, a really prevalent thing. Uh, in some flights I've taken where 
I have at times gotten up because I had no choice. Like if I needed to use the restroom, like somebody's going to help me find this restroom or I'm going to find it because there, <laughs> there's no, there's no if, ands, or buts about that. Yep. Like that's got to happen. Yeah. There have been times where it's like, oh, I would like to get something to drink or I would like to go see what this food is about over here. Where I will get up and, and go around, but having Ira gives you a little bit more confidence, I think. And also you have that person that can see where you're going. So you avoid the havoc slash embarrassment of going through all of the tables and bumping into all of the chairs to get to the counter when there was a much clearer path to get there you just couldn't find it mm-hmm, mm-hmm. we've all been there especially in in crowded places like that that's one of the reasons why i really like the slinger i, I I'm, I'm growing to like it more and more because i'm thinking in the <laughs> man, airport man that slinger, throw man, that, that slinger, slinger. On, throw that phone on with the slinger around my neck it's just looking out it's, it's growing on me it's growing on me the slinger slim though i my first one was the slinger and i don't think i need that wallet but yeah the slim i think would be nice because then i can just slip my phone in my pocket when i don't want it around my neck which is I more think- often than not i think I think what I would probably end up doing, though, because uh, I'm, I'm going to hopefully, well, we'll see what happens at the end of the <laughs> week. Uh, I'll hopefully grab one of these while we're in Houston. If not, I'll just have to wait until we restock and, and get one. Uh, but what I think I might do is buy like a, well, it doesn't stick on silicon, but buy a case mm. that has the slinger attached to it. So when I don't need the slinger at all, I could take it off. Yeah. Take the whole case on, off. Yeah, take and, the whole case off. Yeah, and not have to worry about you know possibly you know deteriorating the the, the stickiness of the of the uh, slinger. That's my and, thinking. Uh, because I do on occasion have a uh, I do have a MagSafe wallet right now. I will buy another one at some point because I just bought one to see like does this MagSafe crap really work? So it was like twelve bucks. So it's not a great one. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I will buy another one at some point. But I do like the ability to have. I don't want the slinger to be my wallet because I'm not always. Gonna, I know I'm not always going to want that on my phone. Uh, thinking yeah. about if I need to go do um, a video call and I need to just grab my iPhone and use it for that. Like again, the slinger could be you know bulk or something in the way or affects the ability to use MagSafe. Which for me, I'm not a MagSafe charging person at this point because I don't have one and I'm not going to buy one uh, right now. But I do use MagSafe accessories like the wallet that I have. Um, There's another little little attachment thingy I had, and I, I briefly had a connection, a, a camera mount thing that used uh, MagSafe. Also, so I like the MagSafe uh, accessories that exist, and using a slinger on the iPhone would would prevent that. So I think that may be my ultimate solution for me personally is to have a slinger that is a attached to a case. And when it's time for slinger, we break out that case. And if it's not time for slinger, you know, that case is, you know, in a backpack at least. So I always know it's there. And if I happen to run out of the house with the backpack, I still got my slinger. Because I can definitely see walking around, exploring, being able, not having to hold your phone up uh, as, as much as I have jived and, and joked on this whole hanging something around your neck. There are times when hands free or having your cane in one hand and your other hand free and still getting that feedback is super valuable yeah yeah and you can go to atguys.com if you want to check out the slinger yes but if jj doesn't pay us for these advertisements we're no longer going to have them in the show so jj if you're not listening oh uh we've been working on a wordpress site lately <laughs> we've been working on a lot of wordpress sites lately Damasi. <laughs> Uh, unless you have something else, I think we can wrap it up with my last topic that I have for you related to WordPress because you're the person I go to and ask these questions. Um, themes. So one of these sites that I'm going to tell you by the end of the show, actually, you could do it right now if you feel so inclined, we can make this site that's on your, that's in development live because I've made the changes that need to be made right now and i need someone else to go visually look at it and well if it doesn't work then uh, we'll figure it out uh but the the thing that i have is this site has probably 10 different themes installed on it and i'm going through and deleting these themes that aren't active because you can only have one theme active in wordpress so generally what are your thoughts about having backup themes or extra themes installed in wordpress or at, on top of the one that you already have. So for me, I it depends. 
for a site like the one that you're talking about, uh, once I settle, usually for me the way this goes, I will have a a backup theme. It especially if I'm tr- like during the development process, I will usually have a backup theme, like just in case. I need to make sure that, you know, if I'm poking at a theme, if I'm trying to customize the theme that I'm using, I will have a backup theme just in case, uh, or I will make a child theme of that. For a production site, I honestly prefer to only have the active theme installed, and I will drop the rest of them. Um, okay. Because I'm not ever going to switch to those in any given situation. Uh, unless I'm in a staging or development environment to begin with to see if something's broken. Like, I'm not just going to switch, you know, from Generate Press to 2023, 2023. on a production site to see if something is, is, is theme-related broken. Like, I'm going to do that on a test site because most of the production sites I have are of some importance to the people who own them. So, therefore, I do not like to play around with people's live production sites. And it also creates bad habits. Mm. Uh, one of the things I have realized is the habits that I consistently enforce and don't violate or step outside of those rules, they, they have always protected me, which, you know, one example is this, is this site that you're working on right now. I went in and deleted that site. Now, I didn't go through and step-by-step step do all the things that I may have done because I was like, okay, we figured out this is the problem. Mike says blow it away. We've imported the content to a dev site. Okay, poof, blow it away. Guess what I forgot about, Mike? Images. Hmm. Mm, 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 mm. Good to know. But one habit that I have is obsessively backing up things. <laughs> yeah. So I just went and pulled them back up and grabbed the files and dumped them. And, and I actually needed to, I think the images are actually on the dev site. I didn't have an image anywhere that I knew I could get for the logo to go up on the maintenance site because I wanted to at least put their logo up there. So people didn't think, oh, my God, they've been hacked and somebody took it over. It's like, no, that's not what happened. Well. Uh, we're just down for maintenance. Yeah. Uh, so uh, that that was the thing that occurred to me, like, oh. I was like, oh, yeah, but I have backups. Mm-hmm. Because I have backups. Because I always have backups. I have so many backups. <laughs> from that site. I could actually probably go back before. I have backups from the time that I, I moved that site over to my hosting. Yeah. And that's one of those things that I don't um, – I don't compromise on doing things like that. Uh, themes, like having an extra theme installed is not a big deal. Having eight extra themes installed, yeah, get rid of those. Yeah, uh, yeah. They are all gone know. now, actually. <laughs> so uh, just remember, because we've all tried things out. And right now I have two themes. I have 2023, which is currently the active theme. And uh, I may keep that the case. We'll see if there's any problems with it. Uh, because I want to experiment with the full site design and maybe do some some modifications there. But I also have Generate Press because Generate Press is Generate Press, and yep. it's amazing. And it'll do anything. If someone says, "Hey, this doesn't work this way. How do I do that?" I'm going to either a spend a little bit of time fiddling around with 2023 to see if I can make that work, or more likely say we're switching to generate press give me a half hour so i can go make some modifications and we'll be up and running with that but as namasi said backups are essential because if i did switch over to generate press and other things broke you can just go back to what the site looked like prior and then go make the changes that people wanted yeah i'm obsessive about backups um one thing that I will also do is usually put in a theme that I know generally works. So, again, Generate Press is an example of that or the understrap theme. What I would usually do is if I'm trying out something new, like full site editing, like there, there's a site I was working on where I, I kind of built some stuff out with the full site editing. I built the header and the footer with it. And it was a, it was a little bit more painful with Gutenberg than I would like it to be. Uh, I feel like that could be more efficient. I, I don't know how to fix it right now, but I feel like it should be more efficient. But I also had, uh, you know, I would usually, when I'm checking out new features because this theme supports it and maybe the ones that I typically use don't, I still will have, you know, Generate Press or Understrap installed because I know how to do stuff in those themes. If I run into a wall where this isn't working or this capability isn't here or whatever, yeah, like you said, I will switch back to Generate Press or switch over to Understrap very quickly. Right. Uh, and... You know, one reason that I was able to switch over to using Understrap a little bit more is it does make the design elements for me a little bit smoother because it's all inside of a framework, so there's not as much fiddliness. 
uh, with spacing and stuff. Uh, if you don't break it, it tends not to break. It's kind of what I come to expect with understrapping. That's because it's using bootstrap, uh, which is still very opinionated and sometimes goofy too. But hey, I'm not a designer, so I'm going for easy. This looks good enough until you bring somebody in that really knows what they're doing. But a plugin that you may want to not, I mean, for you, you already know about this plugin, Mike, but for listeners, if you're looking for just because you want to, you know, step out and do something different or you just want to try a different theme, uh, but you're used to, say, Generate Press Premium, GP Premium, which allows for you to hook into your theme in different ways and add some code to run code snippets. Uh, well, there's code snippets. Mm-hmm. There's another one. WP Code, I think, is the one from uh, the, the, the folks over at WP Beginner. Uh, either one of those are actually pretty decent. Uh, for being able to insert snippets of code in in the ways that that we got used to doing it with <laughs> Generate Press and GP Premium, because uh, that's one of the reasons that was my thing for so long is because I I could do stuff without having to go actually create a child thing just uh-huh. because I needed to drop a couple of, you know, I wanted to drop the uh, Fathom Analytics code into the footer of a site. I could just do that with GP Premium without having to go make a whole child theme to make this work. Or did you know that there's code? Out, well, Demasi knows this, but listener, you may not know this. There's code out there that will give you a duplicate button on your pages and posts. And that code is awesome because you don't realize how much people want to duplicate stuff until they want to duplicate stuff. And they're like, well, you can go copy and paste, but it's so much faster to just say duplicate, duplicate po- page. Yep. And uh, code snippets and things like that, uh, GP Premium. Uh, all of those things are, and there's some other things that have similar features. I think, uh, what's the one everybody was using for so long? Uh, Genesis mm. uh, has similar mm. stuff uh, as well. I'm glad I never bought that. I mean, everyone was super happy about that, but I I just couldn't so get the money. I got to tell you the reason I never bought it, and here's a name you probably remember, Justin Romack. Yes, sir. So... When I you know met Justin Romack, yeah, I know, right? Mona. He's on Macedon. <laughs> 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 exactly what I thought about. <laughs> like, oh, I should go look for a wall. Because he's probably just Jay Romack on Macedon. Because, you know, How he's you Jay Romack, Romack everywhere. R O M A K? R M O. No, R O M A C K. I will let you know shortly. <laughs> uh, but Justin was a. And, and Justin worked with. I, I don't. I'm not going to even attempt to remember who it was. I want to say it was – I know he had a partner that was working with him. It it may or may not have been his wife um, that did uh, some web development and WordPress development with him. So he used Genesis for a lot of stuff, but he told me flat out, he was like, it's really not as accessible on the backside of things to try to do some of this, but I'm not the one that's doing it. Right. Uh, so, and I don't know if that's improved. I never bought it for that reason. Like, he basically told me, like, don't buy it. Like, it's essentially what he told me at that time. Now, we didn't have a conversation about it after the fact years later when we talked. Uh, but when we were both working on the same project for the same company, he mentioned that to me. He's like, no, nah, I don't do it because it's, uh, he's like, you're going to have to bring somebody in to do some things when you need to make these types of changes uh, to your layout. And it's not worth it. Uh, we actually ended up at the time going with the theme by Jeff Collis, hmm. which was the priority. Premium. Oh yeah, I remember that. He gave that to you if you bought WordPress for Bad Eyes. Yep. And then he sold the theme separately if you didn't want to buy the book. Yep. Yeah. Huh. And he just gave it to me because he's a super awesome guy. But yeah. good old WordPress. There's always multiple ways to get the job done. Yes, sir. I'm not finding him on Mastodon, but I also don't know how to search Mastodon. So, uh, yeah, when we publish next Monday, it will be something that I need to finish editing, but it's literally the easiest editing job I've ever had. So that's pretty cool. Thank you, Stephen and Sean, for that editing job. Um, and yeah, uh, we will be having myself Damasi, marty chatting with steven and sean from double tap and the conversation went in directions i did not 
I can't say I didn't expect it to go in, but it wasn't the intention when we opened Clean Feed for us to go into those directions. And have you listened to Double Tap this week? Nope, I have not. Okay, I'm going to ruin it for you because I didn't ruin it for Marty, but I made him go listen to it. Literally the day after we recorded, Sean's mixer blew up. Oh. <laughs> and then he blamed us because we asked him what mixer he was using. Oh, that's awful. Well, look, he has the audio technica, so he just needed a USB cable to plug in and he yep. could get right back to recording. Yep. Though, man. Yep. Like, you know, that's the so. thing. Yeah, that that was a good episode. Uh definitely give that a listen um on next Monday. When you're hearing this, it'll be the following Monday. We'll be at convention. Oh, I forgot. I told you where to find me at in Houston. Uh I told you where to find me at Houston, and I completely spaced out, and we went on to another conversation or something. Mike brought up something, and then I didn't get to say. Or if you're going to be attending ACB, and you're going to be in Schaumburg this summer, uh, go over to booth 46 to see Michael and let him know you're a listener. And you know, maybe pick up something if you need something, but at least stop by just to say hi. Yeah, we love it when people say hi. And more people listen. I don't know if Demasi's had this experience yet, but more people listen than – I honestly think the numbers show, and then I definitely realize, because sometimes someone will be like, well, it also helps that I'm literally on <laughs> how many podcasts now, but uh, it's more impressive when someone, or more interesting when someone says, hey, are you on this podcast? I recognize your voice from this podcast, so. Yeah, yeah. that happened to me just this past week, as a matter of fact. Ah, like, well, okay. I've heard his voice enough to know he's, I was like, oh, you, you must listen to podcasts, I'm <laughs> not generally hanging around in spaces just talking, so you must be listening to something I record, and I don't record that much, so. I remember thank you for that. Listening. I didn't think about that. Yeah, yeah. Huh, good point. Yeah, so definitely come by and say hi if you're in either one of those cities. Uh, I'm looking forward to meeting some people that I know are going to stop by in Houston. Uh, one who has even taken, she probably didn't listen to the show, but who's taking a sojourn to go all the way across the aisle to the other side just to come pick up stuff from AT guys. So, uh, yeah. Monica? Yeah, Monica. Oh, I think she actually might listen. Oh. She might. I know she listened to Unmute, so she'll probably hear this on the Unmute feed because this also gets published to the Unmute feed, but. Or she just pretends like she listened to Unmute and guesses what we're talking about. Because that's also an option, too. That is also... A, that Monica, also text a me if you're listening. <laughs> oh, man, you're going to get a text tomorrow at, like, uh, 3.30 p.m. 3.30 in the morning. Be like, I do listen. This is the first podcast I listen to on Mondays. So maybe I need to get it edited in time now. Yep. Got to get it done. Uh, speaking of getting it done, do you have anything else, sir? Nope, I think we can wrap this one up, man. We we have gone a little longer than we said we were going to go. Uh, yeah. I said that'll at least get like a 30-minute little show out, man. Let's do that thing. And, you know, well, we've been here for over an hour. I can tell you that. Yeah. Yeah, uh, we'll see how much of it stays in. But right now we've recorded for 68.19, so double the amount of time we expected. Yep. But we appreciate everybody that listens. Thanks again to our current uh, supporter. Supporter number one is how I'm going to dub you. So thanks to supporter number one for listening. Thanks to those who contribute to the show, such as Doug and Michael Doys and Marty and um, the rest of you all, because I'm not going to ever remember everybody's name. Don't take it as a slight against you. Just put it against my bad memory. But we appreciate everybody that contributes and engages with us on uh, social media as well. Mostly on Mastodon, because that's where the two of us tend to hang out. Uh, he is... Payon, P-A-Y-O-W-N, at unmute.community. And I'm Damasi, D-A-M-A-S-H-E, at unmute.community on Mastodon. 